people are here to honor some really, really important people tonight. And as part of our uh, ceremony, we're going to uh, have principals come up when they hear one of their or two of their retirees. And if you uh, hear your name retiree, could you please just come on up here? Um, and we'll uh, let our principals share some beautiful, kind words. And we have Dagmar Derrickson, who's going to hand you some flowers that were actually handpicked just for you from the Edna Garden. So you are taking home some love from your community. Yes. And you know, yes. Also know that um, there are books that are being donated at the library, and I understand that they are there or will be there, Anna. Not ordered, but selected, and have your name in it, and will be placed when, do we know? Before school starts, all right. And what I'll do is I'll make sure to take a picture and then we can send you a follow-up email when you're in far off and distant places, you know, enjoying yourself and see your book. All right, let's have Sandy Agajin come on up. Sandy. Please come up to speak about Sandy. <laughs> okay, Sandy, um, you've probably seen many of these. Uh, I have only seen one. So I was assigned a book to create a theme around speaking to you. And your book is The San Francisco Giants, 50 Years by Brian Murphy. I, I'm, I hate what I wrote, so uh, we'll just put that aside. And then I apologize first because you've been a Giants fan longer than I have, so my references will not extend as far deep as your knowledge will. But I will start by saying, I hope you know how much we love you and appreciate you here at our school. Um, and then I'm gonna start using an analogy of our school being a stadium now. So in terms of how much we love you, Sandy, I don't think there are enough words to encapsulate all that you've done or to properly articulate how much we appreciate you and how phenomenal of a job you've done in a singularly unique role with no redundancy whatsoever. Taking that on and just completely knocked it out of the park. Losing you this year is akin to us losing Bonds, Timmy, Kaner, <laughs> Mad Bum, and Buster all in one go combined. And it would still not be enough to show like how much you do for our school. It's not just all the late night texts and the emails that you're still responding to, the, the weekend work where the two of us are just brainstorming and figuring out the master schedule with the calendar. Uh, and then it's also the positive school climate and taking on things like the Sunshine Committee, right? And so those things we really cannot count. They're not quantitative data, but it lives in all of our hearts. And so if we could, we would hang up a retirement plaque or a home plate with Senpai Agajin on our, on our walls, uh, but Julio would probably not enjoy that very much. So in the interim, I hope you know that we wish you a phenomenal retired life, and we will be playing the tune of Bye Bye Baby in our brains as you walk off. And one last piece, as the great John Miller always says when someone knocks out of the park, sayonara, Adios, pelota. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And by the way, at the end, we'll have the retirees all come up and we're going to get a picture with, her, with the whole board. Next, Robin. Alderson, Robin. Happy 
Robin, I see here you have a certificate 25 years with the district. Thank you, thank you. And we have some flowers for you. And who is your special principal coming up? I see Principal Laura Myers. Lisa. You do that all the time. It's been, it's sorry, sorry, please <laughs> help me, help me, Lisa. Robin. <laughs> Robin began her teaching career right here at Tam Valley 25 years ago. Tam Valley students and staff hit the jackpot when you joined Tam Valley. How fitting that as I pulled into campus this morning at 7 a.m., I saw you and what looked like your entire class coming back from their weekly morning run. The joy on all your red faces and the mere fact that all those kids show up so early in the morning to run with you says it all. Your connection with each of your students is a thing of beauty and your dedication to your students is admirable. You will be so very missed by your students and their parents, but most of all by your colleagues. Robin, your smile is infectious and your students will miss their early morning runs, your Spanish lessons, your love of nature and adventure, and of course, those snow globes. <laughs> Since Robin has been part of the Tam Valley family for 25 years, I wanted to include some of her colleagues' sentiments. Robin welcomed me as a fifth grade teacher to the Mill Valley School District about 18 years ago. I immediately gravitated toward her relaxed nature in the classroom, her creative lesson plans, and her bright, beautiful classroom. She has a way with students that makes it look like they're friends. Students respect her, and she respects them. Robin's creative use of incorporating art and Spanish into her curriculum continues to inspire me. Robin is a fixture at Tam Valley, and her absence will be felt in so many areas of the school community. Thank you for being such a calm presence, always bringing common sense to our meetings, and a wonderful colleague and friend. I know that retirement will be another wonderful, well-earned adventure, and we are all so happy for you. We'll miss you. <laughs> and now, Lori Boreri. You too, 25 years. Thank you so much. And Lisa Myers is back. <laughs> Lori, oh, the chats we've had. Love you. Lori, since your tenure in the Mill Valley School District of 25 years, you have worked at four out of our five elementary schools, helping to open Strawberry Point School. Your passion for student learning and, your, and for your own learning and betterment has been obvious. Your classroom is always a well-oiled machine and a model for engagement. You consistently give so freely of your time to your students and colleagues. You can, this is, so this is from some of your colleagues. Lori welcomed me into her classroom to observe the week before I was to re-enter the classroom full-time after several years of teaching part-time. What I saw inspired me and made me remember why I went into teaching in the first place. Lori's passion for student learning and her passion for her own learning is palpable. I have learned from Lori every time I have talked with her over the past four years. Even the most brief interaction would leave me wondering, reflection, reflecting, and wanting to learn more. Lori's knowledge of pedagogy is extensive. She is beloved by her students and parents alike. I will miss her thought-provoking questions and guidance, my colleague and friend. I, for one, will miss Lori's passion in our early morning chats. Tam Valley will miss you dearly. As I mentioned, Linda and Lori have a long legacy behind. I thought Linda was going first, so sorry. <laughs> Not the least of which are the beautiful planters they created with their students using old file cabinets, paint, and lots of love. The Tam Valley community will enjoy them for years to come. We'll miss you. 
And now, Linda Broom, please. <laughs> Linda, come on up. <laughs> 28 years, folks, 28 years. Okay, I want it known for the record that Tam Valley is an awesome place to work, as you can see, 28, 25, just because they happen to be all retiring. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Linda began her teaching career right here at Tam Valley 28 years ago. She student taught at Tam Valley and then at Old Mill and then was snatched up by the Tam Valley family 28 years ago. Linda, your strong dedication to the teaching profession, your students and your colleagues is remarkable. You are a role model for us all and you will be, leave a big legacy and love and commitment. Thank you for your hard work and care for it all. Since Linda has worked at Tam Valley for her entire career, I wanted to include some sentiments from her longtime colleagues. Linda is a tireless teacher of children. She is dedicated to each and every one of them, making sure that they receive the individual instruction they need. She is an advocate for children and teachers alike. She is always looking out for what is needed and what can be done to make it happen. Linda is a colleague who always has time for questions, concerns, and will always take the time out of her very busy day to show the way. It has been my pleasure to be on Linda's team. She helped make my transition back into the classroom easier. I will miss her guidance and infectious laugh. Happy biking trails, Linda. I know that you will embrace retirement just as passionately as you embraced each day of teaching. You will be very missed. <laughs> okay, John Celix. John Celix. Is it 27 or 28 years? 27 years. And now a few words from our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For over 27 years, John Celix has been a standout third grade teacher at Old Mill. When stepping in, into John's classroom, you are immediately impressed by John's calm demeanor gentle tone, and professional, deliberate manner. Each and every day in room six, John offers a master class in how to create a space where students feel safe, successful, and empowered to take intellectual risks. Beyond the classroom, John is a leader among the staff and a true pillar of the community. As a colleague, John is always someone you can count on for anything. Whether it's a lesson plan that needs a tweak, a problem you can't quite solve, or you, you just need to talk through what's on your mind, all of us, the entire staff, know that we can always count on 100% of John's energy and attention, and that his advice will always come from a place of thoughtfulness and integrity. John, you, you will be missed more than you, you know. From the classroom, to student council, to the ge geography bees, to who's on first, to the greater Old Mill community, you leave behind an incredible legacy that all of us will strive to carry forward. Excuse me, folks, we'll just turn on the video to start at 6.02, and so it's on. 
Okay. <laughs> Very good. So now um, I want to share with you that uh, Lisa Strap is not here. Oh, sorry. I, I'm sorry. Stap, thank you very much. She's not here, but we know that she's enjoying herself, and she'll receive flowers and her certificate. And so our last retiree, but not least, is Sally Strike. Come on up, Sally. <laughs> just mention that Sally has been with our district in service for 16 years. Thank you, Sally. Thank you very much. Come on up, Principal Aubrey O'Connor. Thank you. Boy, are we lucky that it wasn't a baseball book, because this would be a really short speech. <laughs> None of those analogies. Okay. <clears throat> Not emotional. The book that was chosen in Sally Strike's name, Hello, Mr. Blue by Daria Peoples, um, is a story of a beloved musician who is deeply connected to his community. So is the story of Park School's Sally Strike. Dedicated educator for 30 years and the sunshine that has tied the park community together for the last 16. Sally has graced the halls of park with her humor her levity, and her love of learning alongside her students. She is respected by her peers as a sounding board and loved by her students. She has never shied away from doing the hard work that it takes to meet each and every student where they are and guiding them as they grow into the best version of themselves. Sally, we know that this year has been your swan song. Please consider this the Mill Valley School District giving you the standing ovation that you deserve. We will miss your melody. So, we love you, Sally. So, so could all... Sure. So could all the retirees come up as well as the trustees? We're going to have a photo with everybody. Sure. Oh, are you going to take a picture for her? There we go. All right. All right. There we go. Sure. Please do. And oh, and here and here. <laughs> Fantastic. Come on up. Come on up, trustees and retirees. We'll have a photo. Testing, testing. Okay, all good. All right, good evening. We will now call the official regular board meeting to order. It is 6.07 p.m. May I have the um, roll call, please? President Cern President Cerns at charge. Present. Trustee Abdoli. Present. Trustee Yu. Present. Trustee Katz. Present. And I'm Trustee Nakatani, and I'm here. Very good. And please let us know if you cannot hear us, as we will 
maybe also bring the mics a little closer for some folks um, might help. All right, may I have the approval of the agenda? I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? All right, that passes. Okay, before we begin um, with the recognition presentation, I will call the names of our retirees into the record. I just wanted to share a few opening remarks. And first, it was such a joyful exper experience tonight to see everybody here in community from different parts of our community um, to uh, rejoice in all the service of our retirees. So thank you. And also to give a warm welcome to our new superintendent, Dr. Elizabeth Kaufman. We're so excited. And I just want to make some remarks related to some recent events, uh, some that have been in our local independent journal, and just to give you some board um, reflections, which I think we all share. Um, so the board's vision, values, and goals is that the strong belief that collaborative approach to problem solving and creating direction to achieve district goals is embedded and really must be embedded in all the decisions we make for the benefit of our students. And we are so grateful that we've had numerous collaborative decisions with Mill Valley Teachers Association already, and they've been made during the negotiation cycle, and we do have a few outstanding issues left to finalize. Uh, the Mill Valley School District Board does hold the unwavering belief that together with the Mill Valley Teachers Association, we will develop an agreement that provides for increased compensation without compromising our strong fiscal health. And we also um, know that our communities, educators, parents, and students really deserve uh, nothing less. And the hope is that our school year um, can end and we've really explored all our options to get a resolution. Uh, we want to let you know that our negotiations team does remain prepared to meet. So we are hopeful that we may be able to get back to work. I wanted to share those thoughts with you this evening. Uh, so now I am going to read the retirees' names into the record so that we have that. Uh, Sandy Agagin, Robin Alderson, Lori Barreri, Linda Brun, John Selix, Lisa Stapp, and Sally Strike. Congratulations again. <laughs> All right, and now we move on to public comment, and we uh, provide the public the opportunity for public comment on all items not on the agenda. All right, so we um, will provide three minutes per speaker, and uh, depending on whether you're on Zoom or not, please feel free to uh, come on up, but also identify who you are and what organization or school you may be affiliated with. So let's start with Bria Rubin. Bria Rubin, are you here? Okay, we're looking on Zoom. Okay. Jackson Beard, Jackson Beard. Jackson Beard, please come on up. Thank you, and let's make sure we do have a mic that works so we can hear you speak. Thank you for being here, you may begin, Jackson. Let us know uh, what school you're with. Um, I am with Anna McGuire, and my teacher is Mrs. Engel. Thank you very much. You will have three minutes. Please start. My favorite teachers are great. If they left Anna, I would be very sad. They don't get to teach me anymore. Like Miss Jen who left, she was the best school counselor ever. I think great teachers will have to leave because they don't get paid enough because they can't pay for rent for their homes, so they will move to a different school. 
Mrs. Manali is leaving so she doesn't have to commute now and can work near her house at a different school, not in Maroon. Some great teachers live far away because they can't live here. Some really great teachers live here, but maybe not for very long anymore. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jackson. Now, I have Brooklyn. I don't have a last name. Is Suera Brooklyn? Brooklyn, come on up. And it's your first time speaking. I heard that. Thank you so much. We value your voice. So if you could tell us, oh, sorry, what, what um, school you're coming from and what grade you're in. Uh, I'm in third grade, and I'm coming from Edna. Thank you very much, Brooklyn. You'll have three minutes. Please begin. OK. In third grade, I learned about the government laws and how a bill is accepted. There are many steps of a law. It has to go through many branches until it finally gets to the president. Then the president can accept the law or decline it and send it back. I've learned Edna McGuire was an important person. She was a teacher and she was also a principal. I know bad teachers make kids feel sad when they yell at them for just being kids and for splitting people up in unfair groups and sometimes making us go against each other. Good teachers make kids feel happy when they, com when they compliment our work, cheer us on, and support us when we need it the most. In the middle of third grade, I wrote about how I wanted to be vice president like Kamala Harris. I said I was fair, honest, and trustworthy because I would listen and be patient even if I didn't agree with people. By the way, my Aunt Kelly works with Kamala in the state capitol. Thank you very much, Brooklyn, for your comments. Yeah. Oh, please, please. Uh, I have a poem. All right. Forgotten. I am the puddle you splashed in yesterday. I am the sock you forgot about behind the couch. I am the button that fell off your favorite sweater. I am the kid in the back of the bus. I am the glasses you never bought. I am forgotten. Thank you very much, Brooklyn. Beautiful. Thank you very much for coming, sharing your thoughts with us today. All right. And now, Sarah, I'm sorry, is it Bivens? Yeah, Bivens. that was a maiden name. Okay. I wasn't sure if it would allow for three of the same Zoom names, so I didn't. That's didn't okay. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Very um, articulate child. And please, you have three minutes when you're ready. She had lots of choices, and she decided a few days ago that she didn't. And last minute, she really wanted to share that with you guys. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so we'll have three minutes for your comments, and there is a timer over here on the left. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah. I was born Sarah Beth Bivens. I'm Sarah Beard now. It took me a while to decide how I wanted to speak today. I'm not speaking on behalf of parents, I'm not speaking on behalf of teachers or those in education anymore. I've spoken on those before and it feels like it <clears throat> um, goes on deaf ears sometimes. So today I'm coming to speak to you as a voter and a constituent here in Mill Valley who elected all three members recently to the, the new board. Um, I fault myself with not doing more research on all members of the board, um, obviously doing better due diligence with any voting is upon the voter. I don't want to say I'm disappointed in any individual person. It's been a short period of time with the new board. But um, currently, I um, am a non-child-bearing voter. I have a hysterectomy recently, so I cannot bear children. And so I'm speaking on behalf of those individuals, um, which are a lot in Mill Valley. Um, I started reading this book called What If I'm Wrong and Other Key Questions for Decisive School Leadership by Simon Rodberg. I found it very informative. I'd like to gift that to the board. Um, 
I told the Mill Valley Public Library that they can expect that book um, when the board ever, if they're ever done reading, that's no problem. I also started reading and haven't finished. There's a few little things. It's called Time for Change, Four Essential Skills for Transformational School and District Leaders by Anthony Muhammad and Luis F. Cruz. Um, I started reading it. It's also very informative. Um, again, just information. I've also visited recently, today, the Marin County Office of Education, um, the Mill Valley School District Office, as well as made a phone call to the City Hall, which redirected me to those places. Um, and I was able to receive a free printout at the Marin County Office of Education of the procedures for recalling state and local officials. They printed it out free of charge. They were very kind. I haven't really read through every page. It does seem pretty straightforward. It's just, I felt like maybe I just didn't do a good job understanding things and I just wanted to have the information. When I wanted to look for information, it was very hard to find one place that had it. Um, so I'm now aware um, through Marin County Office of Elections, County Elections, or that um, it takes approximately less than 5,000 signatures to initiate a, um, a, a ballot recall or something to that effect. Um, there are many other steps, but I just wanted to say I, I'm becoming a more informed voter, so I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Sarah, for your co comments. And Jill Kaufman. Jill Kaufman. Thank you very much. Okay, Jill. Can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, Jill. Great. You'll yes. have three it's, minutes it's, and we'll I'm help going. you if you don't yes. hear the buzzer. Okay, it's me again, everyone. I'm Jill Kaufman. I'm a parent at Tam Valley. I want to say how wonderful it is to be able to attend the last board meeting, even if it's virtually, of the school year. I am once again here to address the topic of school safety. Since the meeting of June of last year, I have addressed this board six times about the issue of school safety. And with the exception of the proclamation of Gun Violence Awareness Day, urging our community to wear orange, I've seen very little from the board in this district with any tangible ideas or guidance for safety in our schools. This district should be providing rules, guidelines, plans, staff training, site assessment, et cetera, and not leaving it up to each individual school to figure it out, which has sadly been the case. If I am wrong, please correct me and make it clear the district's plans for this community in terms of school safety. I can't seem to get a clear answer as to where do we get our directives from. Putting it on each school site is irresponsible and the district needs to put measures into place. The School Site Safety Council at Tam Valley, thank goodness, has worked tirelessly. The parents, teachers, and our amazing principal, Lisa Lamar, have made it a top priority by spending an exorbitant amount of time coming up with our own directives, since there are very loose ones from the district. We should not be the ones having to figure out a plan and measures. That is on the district. And like I said, if I am wrong, please point me in the direction where I can visually see the measures that the district has in place. If they don't exist, I urge our new superintendent and this board, which claimed that this issue was a top priority when you were campaigning to do the work this summer. Let us return to school in August with a thoughtful plan about school safety. Walk your talk, please. And if you do, I can assure you the days of you seeing me at these school board meetings, I will not address this topic yet again. But most importantly, our kids and staff will be as safe as possible. You have the whole summer to do something. I am not okay with waiting till April or May for this to be an issue. Please protect the loved ones, our children, our parents, our staff, and volunteers, and address this issue. Thank you very much. I wish you a very well, safe, and happy summer. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. And now, do we have Bria Rubin who we can connect with? Bria Rubin, are you there? No? All right, do we have any other comments that have come in? Okay, so seeing no other comments, then let us move to CSEA's report. Sandy, will you come on up and share your report with us? Is Sandy here? Yes, she is. One last report, Sandy. We're looking forward to it. Go 
Good evening. I don't really have a report today, but um, like, unlike Jackson and Brooklyn, I do not, ha I'm not comfortable with public speaking, as you can tell. But anyway, I just wanted to thank everybody, wish you a happy summer, and um, if there are any issues that come up with CSEA over the summer, I'd like you to contact uh, Stan Bransgrove, our regional rep, or Pat Barron, who is here f uh, through the summer at Edna. So thank you very much. Oh, Sandy, thank you. And do you know who might be replacing you yet uh, for next year? No. Not yet. No, nobody's willing to fill your, your No one can fill your shoes. Thank you again, Sandy. Thank you so much. All right, and now can we have MBTA and Linda Brun and Aaron Frazier come on up? Um, first, I want to thank you for the wonderful retirement celebration and congratulations to all the retirees. And I also want to say thank you to Julie Brammer. Are you here, Julie, still? <laughs> Julie Brammer, who will be taking my place in the fall. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. She, she already thanked you for oh, the wait. retirement celebration. And I, too, thank you. It was lovely. Um, <clears throat> uh, thank you for having us. We appreciate the opportunity to present to you each month at the board meetings. I'm available next week, so <laughs> I'll be here to wish you a happy summer then. Um, we also want to welcome Elizabeth Kaufman to Mill Valley. Welcome. Um, we know that our members are looking forward to a collaborative relationship with our new superintendent, and thank you again for your efforts in securing the best possible superintendent for our district's future. We wanted to give you an update on negotiations. So we have sent you the information that we sent to our members regarding the current state. You can be assured that the messages and, and the rationale that we share with our members and with you are the same as the ones that we share at the bargaining table. MBTA's bargaining team's goal is to maintain total transparency about our student-centered bargaining proposals. We're just going to give you a brief update, since we sent you a lot to read, um, on the articles that are still in dispute. You can, anyway, you can find the rest in your email. Oh, it's, it's still me. <laughs> it's just a heading. Article 21. Um, MBTA members were encouraged to have reached an agreement on the salary increase for the 23-24 school year. Thank you very much for your support and movement on the first year. We are hopeful that management will provide a new counter on the second year that would keep pace with the cost of living increases. MBTA's last counter proposal for the second year was 6%. Management returned to the table with the same proposal twice on Friday night and declined to make its best and final offer. So we too are hopeful that we can reach an agreement. We echo your sentiment from earlier. Um, article 10, 10.2, 10.2.1, duty-free lunch period. On Friday, management continued to propose language that would allow them to direct non-classroom teachers to provide services to students during lunch. There are many ways in which unit members currently contribute to student success during their duty-free lunch period. Collaboration with colleagues on curriculum, as well as areas of support student support, and this cannot happen if specialist lunch period is at a different time. Participation in positions that provide student services, including peaceful playground coaches, some school sites are called conflict managers, game space, maker space, tiger lounge, open library, staffed by library aides, student groups at the middle school and elementary level, including green team, student council, and much more. Communication with parents, reviewing student work and providing feedback, setting up and cleaning up of scheduled lessons and activities, participation in PTA and DEI meetings, among other parent educator community groups. Requiring members to create new lunchtime activities would significantly increase the demands on specialist teachers and change their working conditions, which would make it more difficult to attract and retain the best teachers for these positions. The above reasoning 
does not even include the importance of workplace connection. Teachers are already isolated during the school day because they spend vast majority of their time working alone in their classrooms with students. Our common lunch time is the only time to connect with colleagues, allowing educators the time to connect and come together as staff, and it has a huge impact on school climate and culture that directly impacts our students. Separating groups of educators undervalues the importance that all staff members play in the, student, in the school community. The next one is 10.4.1.1, elementary prep time. <clears throat> Management continues to refuse to codify the 200 minutes of prep time that elementary unit members currently receive. It's important to remember that in addition to all the ways in which sufficient prep time contributes to student success, MVTA's proposal to codify current contract language would not ne necessitate any additional cost for the school district. The next item is frequency and length of general staff meetings. <clears throat> Management has proposed contract language that says that district-wide and general staff meetings shall be considered part of the workday. And MBTA has agreed to this concept because we know that it's important to management's team. We also see the value in staff meeting agendas being set to meet the needs of each school and its students and does not want any unnecessary roadblocks in the collective purpose of meeting students' needs. This would, however, represent a significant change in contract language and is an example of the movement that MBTA continues to make for the sake of students. In response to management's proposed language that staff meetings be included in the workday, MVTA proposed the following language. The frequency and length of general staff meetings shall be mutually agreed upon by MBTA leadership and district administration. Without protective contract language, we have seen the number of Wednesday meetings increase and vary over the years. MBTA, MBTA members know that giving teachers more time to do their professional duties is one way to support them as the demands on teachers continue to increase. Adding more meetings to the teacher's schedules without their agreement is not how to support them in supporting their students. So MBTA's bargaining team was disappointed when management's team decided to go home without reaching an agreement on Friday night. And MBTA's team believes that we are close to an agreement that would ensure success for our students. We will continue to fight for the best for our members and students, and we know that the district has the funds, and we encourage you to consider teachers as a priority in the budget. We know that educators are the best and most important resource in any school district. So please invest in your educators and invest in your students. And thank you again for all the time that you are dedica dedicating to our district. Thank you very much. And now we'll move on to approval of the consent agenda. So I'm asking if there are any items that you wish to have put on um, for discussion. Yes, can we discuss the items five and six? And I just have a question for items eight. Uh, item eight, just I completely slipped. I'm sorry, I didn't let you know earlier. And that's, I just want to get some more information from the right horizon to not renew the contract or what happens to our Okay, so you're asking to pull items five, which is agreement for consulting services, Leo Kostelnik. Agreement for services, no, item six, Glean Education, and yeah. item eight, Bright Horizons After School Program and Lease. Can I make a question Are there any clarification other? Clarification on that one. On item eight, uh, do you actually have an issue with a contract or do you just want to understand a I different just, issue, which is the um, aftercare offerings of the district? Yeah, I just, I just want to, I'm concerned. She wants to have a conversation. So perhaps, yeah. but that wouldn't really be within the scope of eight. So mm. I, uh, yeah, yeah, so I think maybe. Yeah. Eight stays and on future board agenda items we discuss after yeah. care, we, we raise her issue. So perhaps Dr. Roman, you can comment on that in terms of uh, the request yeah. from the board member to have further clarification. Yeah. And whether that should be taken off the agenda for that purpose tonight. So the agenda item that's currently on there is information only. Okay. And yeah. so the information that's provided in the actual narrative is the information that we have at this time. Okay, yeah. So can we infer that um, there will be an enrollment update on October, sometime in October, based on the reading of this, just to get some more clarity? Yes, that's so they're based out of Boston, and so they basically said that they will, um, what's, what's in the narrative is that they will give an enrollment update um, based on their operations um, as of October. I had requested that it be done sooner, but they feel like October 
end of end of October, October 31st is really where they will be able to see where their enrollment counts are. So there are a lot of working family, you know, parents both work and they need aftercare and if Bright Horizon suddenly decides not to um, offer service, do we have any replacement ideas or is it something that we'll deal with in the oh, fall? I, I had the same question when I had my um, prep meeting with Kimberly and uh, and, and same concerns, yeah. and it seems like it's just a little too too preliminary right now to okay. be able to answer any of those things. Okay. And as we get more information, we'll be able to get an update from from the district. But I think it's obviously very much on on your minds and on the agenda to look into yeah. options in case it doesn't come through. Yeah. Exactly. We provided um, an informational item at the February board meeting and again we have confirmed with them that they need additional time. Um, they We had offered them an extension of their lease agreement and they are saying that they need to evaluate their enrollment yeah. um, and then they will provide that information October 31st. Okay. Thank you. Okay. so. We're now moving to item G, and we are going to begin. Okay, so we're going to um, stay on consent item F, and may have a motion to approve the consent agenda, agenda items with item five and six removed. So, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's aye with my standard qualification. Thank you, Trustee Abdoli. So now we will go to G and we will place on that agenda item items five and six from the consent agenda. And let's um, discuss first agreement for consulting services, Leo Kostelnik, and if there can be any just brief descriptor of that item and then we'll have questions um, and um, discussion before a motion. Uh, so the glean item is um, we're on item five. So the agreement for consulting services, Leo Kostelnik. The agreement for services is between the Mill Valley School District and Leo Kostelnik for educational consultancy services during the next school year. The funding source is through Educator Effectiveness Block Grant. Happy to answer any questions. So this is not coming from the general fund. Correct. Okay. All right. And do you know the implementation time of the new math framework? Is that going to be just this year, or will we need a couple more years? Um, we have not received any new state guidance. Um, yeah. We understand that the framework is still under review. Um, I'm seeing nods from those who are part of the math committee as well. Um, so it's at least over a year delayed at this point. So what would, I just, I, I don't know much about it. So what would Leo be working on this year? Is he, I know he was working with Edna teachers. Um, we can have um, Ms. Myers come up and yeah. speak to the work that they've done. Um, we did have a presentation on this um, earlier. Yeah. Can I just clarify, it does come from our general operating budget, but these are restricted dollars. Okay, all right. So for me to clarify, the question is what exactly will Leo be working on? Yes, yes. So it's, so the math um, committee presentations that we've done this year, it's a continuation of that next year. So it's continuing that same work forward, the same math goals mm -hmm. that the math committee has created and they've been working on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, how, how about how it relates to middle school? So the middle school math department um, was invited to join the committee in the beginning and they had um, two different people come as um, kind of represent, representatives, representatives, represent, <laughs> representatives, representatives, What's thank you, um, and then decided to peel off of the committee um, and they were not interested in in that work at that time, but it's an offer to them if they choose to do so. What we're working on primarily in elementary school is alignment in the middle school math department is very aligned already. And, and, and I know this is already kind of being done at Edna. Is it going to be implemented at other schools or is it already being implemented? It's work that's done across all five school sites. And yeah. so the math committee has represent, 
representatives from all five of the elementary school sites that come together at the committee um, and represent their um, grade levels and their school sites. Um, and then that work is then brought to the grade level team. So all of like all of kindergarten, all of first grade, all of second grade across the entire district then work on those common formative assessments um, and work on math workshop models and aligning their practices across the entire district at those meetings. And is it going to start this year, the, the implementation part? We've or been, have, we've been doing start? this all, we've been doing it okay. for the past two years. Okay. So I, I'm just trying to think about it from financial perspective <laughs> as, as we kind of agree that we need to examine every single expense items. Is, is this something that you think we need to continue this year? You know, it's still being done, but is it something that's going to be ongoing or is it something you expect to phase out? Um, I think that depends a lot on the math committee and just um, so long as there's interest from our teachers, we'll continue it. Um, yeah. it this was really driven from teachers. And it also, um, Leo's services include the math, con um, math master's class mm -hmm. um, that was driven from the teachers. So, and from the fiscal perspective, this comes from the Educator Effectiveness Fund, which is specific state grant funds for professional development. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and is it going to be phased out as we run out of the fund? So the fund um, has to be expended by 25, 26, okay. and our plan is to um, use it fully by next school year. Okay, all right. So I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, it's coming from the grant, but then Dr. Rollins said it was coming from the general operating budget? I'm so it's our general fund, and within the general fund, there are unrestricted funds and restricted funds. Yeah. These are restricted funds. Restricted funds yeah. that came from yeah. the effectiveness, yeah. e educator effectiveness grant. Correct. Okay. Got it. Okay. Got it. Sorry. The general fund. What's so that? we, Sorry. yeah. Trustee Abdul, yeah, did no, you have some ahead, comment? Ahead, so we can't it. use it for any other purpose other yeah, than professional just, development okay. is what I'm getting. Yeah. Are there any other questions before we, so we will need to vote? Oh. We have a, uh, oh, I have, okay, one last question. I have Remember? more of a comment. Um, I attended, I was invited by the math Masters, thank you. I'm looking at Kelsey because she invited me, um, and it you know it's great, and uh, I you know I, I could see all the work that was done, and I've heard really great things. But what we what we don't have is any data about um, how the teachers feel, or you know, if, so if this was driven by teachers, it would have been kind of nice to have that information, and also how effective it has been for them. Um, it, 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 I feel like that kind of kind of end of the year feedback would be nice to inform this going forward, you know, following years. Um, it was just a no, comment. Thank okay, you. thank you. And also, we do have a public comment. Kate Kelman and Anne Marie Padilla. I don't. Do we have any other questions, though? I think that the glean is the same thing. It's coming out of the. We'll get the to grant, that in just right, a moment. Okay. Yes, because we have a public comment. Thank yeah. you, Laura thank you, Myers, Laura. Uh, Kate Kelman, and Anna Marie Padilla. Come on up to speak about F5 and since you're here, if you can speak about F6. Yeah, they're sort of, they're, Thank com you. they're combined. Thank I'm you. Kate Kelman, Tam Valley. Hi, Anne-Marie Dia, uh, Tam Valley. So we're here to voice our concerns over agreements for services that are on the agenda. The negotiations update that was shared with families this week painted a dire picture of the financial landscape. It stated that if salaries are increased, we would quote, would have to consider cuts to student programs, layoffs, and would be unable to launch and fund new programs, end quote. It even went as far as to say that the middle school rebuild may be in jeopardy if more money was spent on teacher salaries. I guess our question is, how can we approve funding for the services of individuals who are not district employees when families are being told that current district employees, programs, and projects have an uncertain future? A specific concern is that if approved, the math consultant's compensation will surpass that of a full-time classroom teacher with 18 plus years of experience and the maximum number of continuing education units on our salary schedule. The consultant's fee of $117,000 is only slightly less than what two first-year teachers, full-time first-year teachers earn. Not to mention that the consultant will only be providing 35 to 55 days of work. 
while classroom teachers work for 186 days for the same compensation. If approved, the message, is that be, the message that is being sent is that a consultant is about four times as important as a beginning teacher. Also of concern is that the consulting fee for Glean education exceeds that of every classroom teacher, including ones with 24 plus years of experience. Lastly, it is concerning that a decision is being made to extend these contracts without sharing the result of the recent professional development survey. Are these trainings being asked for? When will they take place? Will these trainings take teachers out of the classroom or will they cut into our limited planning and collaboration time? So we ask that your decisions align with your messaging to the community and that you show your support for the time and talents of teachers by making do with our current resources and not outsourcing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And now, um, do we have any further questions? I, mean, I guess maybe Michelle or Kimberly, if you can restate just the concerns around the funding. It sounds like this could not be applied because it's restricted and coming from the grant only for professional development services coming from outside that is that correct that this this could not be applied to salaries for staff so these funds are specific for um, educator effectiveness and so there are specific parameters around that which is why it is they are restricted funds okay but could you answer the question can they be used in negotiations for salaries or no I should say this um, I do not have the educator effectiveness parameters but we can pull them from CDE Generally speaking, because the funds run out in 2025, they are not ongoing funds. They're one-time funds with parameters set around the program of educator effectiveness. So I'm not answering your question directly because, I mean, I suppose they could be used. Um, they are used for hourly, you know, I, I guess what I would say is they are used for, and looking at Laura, they are used for hourly time for our current staff when they are attending professional development. I think that there are certain funds set aside for that, but um, I would need to pull the details. Uh, Laura, do you want to add any comments to that? Or have the information? If not, we... I just want to be careful not to engage in a dialogue, just I want to make sure that I'm following the proper board um, procedures, but um, so I agree that the the um, the price tags on these are quite large, and that is what the price tag of consultants are. Um, facing history, facing ourselves was double that for one year. That's that's the cost of these things. That's part of the reason why um, the state provides funding for it. Um, and I'll just read the. Um, I was going to read the what the edu it's. Um, funding for county offices of education, school districts, charter schools, and state special schools for professional learning for teachers, administrators, paraprofessionals that work with pupils, and classified staff that inter interact with pupils. So this was approved by the board in November 2021. There is a three-year plan that was approved, and um, literacy and math consulting were part of that. And can you clarify, I suspect that Leo and um, the Glean instructors have significantly more experience than a first year teacher. Um, they do. Um, Michelle, can you, can you speak to, um, are we paying for their benefits or anything like that? Or is it, this is just the straight consulting fee and they're responsible for their own benefits? No, that's a great question. Um, consultants are, they're not employees of the district and so therefore they, we do not pay for any of their benefits. Um, the consulting fee is inclusive of them, you know, paying their own ben benefits or other costs they may have, which would also include like insurance and things like that if they're an LLC. Um, I'll just add to what Laura said, and I'm happy to send the link, is that these funds, um, educator effectiveness funds, may be used to support the professional learning of certificated teachers, administrators, paraprofessional educators, and certificated staff. Funds may be expended for any of the following purposes. The first one is coaching and mentoring, and I won't read the entire thing. The second is programs that can lead to effective 
standards aligned instruction and improve instruction in literacy. The third being practices and strategies that re-engage pupils and lead to accelerated learning, strategies to implement social emotional learning, practices to create positive school climate, strategies to improve inclusive practices, instruction and education to support implementing effective um, language acquisition for EL learners, new professional learning networks, instruction, education, and strategies to incorporate ethnic studies, instruction um, specifically for early child, childhood development, and strategies to improve beginning teacher retention and support through teacher induction programs. So I mean, there are 11 categories. Um, they do not specifically list that salary and benefit, you know, salary and benefits or compensation. Um, and it's very specific on the parameters as well as the time that these funds need to be spent. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Um, there was mention of a, of a professional development survey. Dr. Berman, could you speak to that survey? And um, because I'm, Yep. I don't think I see it here. Thank you. Um, so annually, a professional development survey is sent to the teachers related to the categories um, that they have interest in pursuing. Um, that was done in collaboration with Laura Myers and Aaron and Linda and um, has been sent to the teachers. So do we, do we have, excuse me, we're running a board meeting so we can't have any conversation. Thank you. Um, do we have any data uh, around that that you can share with us tonight? I don't have it prepared to share tonight. The survey did close. I have a meeting with Aaron and um, Julie Bremer on Monday to discuss the results. Um, this is a tricky time. This happens every year wherein consultants um, ask that their contracts um, be approved so they can plan for the following year and it's at the same time that we ask teachers for their interest in professional development so it's a little bit of the chicken and the egg of which one do you plan first um, so we plan them concurrently um, these contracts can be a um, not to exceed so for instance we used some of this, these funds to pay our consultant for the wellness center um, and we didn't use all of her funds so it was like a do not exceed amount for that um, so if the survey comes back that teachers are not interested in literacy or math in any way then um, we would not have to use the funds for those contracts but we also at the same time have to um, get the contracts in place in the event that the teachers are interested in those services is there any reason um, dr berman that we couldn't put this off for one week uh, to June 15th and um, still s still meet the needs of, of contractors. You may do so. What information would you like us to bring back at that time? So um, I'll speak for myself, but I'm hearing that we have a professional development survey that will be shared and that information may be helpful for us as we evaluate the expenditures. Um, as trustee, you said, we, we need to be we, we wish to be looking at uh, carefully. So it would give us additional information on um, our decision that we don't have right now. Uh, are you able to prepare a presentation of that information by Monday? Um, I'm getting on a plane tomorrow morning and I'm back Sunday night, so um, not a full presentation, but I can um, find a way to share. Sure, my understanding actually is that, that attachments do not legally have to be attached within 72 hours. They can be attached later. We just learned that at our uh, recent uh, Brown Act training. Um, we also don't need a full presentation. We, if there's survey yeah. information and it's, you know, uh, you could just kind of share that survey information. Uh, I guess, have you been receiving I, feedback throughout the year? I'm assuming there have been checkpoints uh, to see how things have been going with both Leo and Glean. Um, yes, anecdotal information and um, and in the survey results, there is a there is a strong interest for the work. I think, and and I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I'm assuming that it's the price tag that's difficult. It's not the the work itself. But um, again, I don't I don't make the PD plan in isolation, and so I do work with the teachers union to come up with a plan for the following year. Um, and as was stated, with negotiations not settled, um, it is challenging to determine how many hours or, or what some of these offerings might look like. Um, something that we have 
worked with our consultants around them knowing kind of where we're at with all of this is that um, should we decide to move forward that we can have some time that is scheduled in and then some time that is opt-in kind of like the math math, math masters class wherein um, teachers can opt in to do those things um, as an example with that Leo works um, closely with Marilyn Burns who we've discussed before her um, daily rate is eight thousand dollars a day so that's it's the it's the cost of the business um, and that's why again there are specific earmarked funds for it it's not something that we can use um, for other things we also and I can bring back the um, the board presentation from November 2021 but we also are using the funds for as when dr. Rollins um, read the teacher induction we use that to cover the cost of teacher induction for our new teachers um, we used it for our wellness center math literacy um, some el release time so Thank in you. so in in taking these specific ones aside standard situation you're doing these to be able to set it up and it when you have the conversation with union leadership if the response in reviewing the survey and in that discussion it was we don't want to continue with this then you would not actually move forward with it regardless of the approval of the contracts or what what would that look like um, most likely not and it really it comes down to relationships and I have a very close relationship with both Glean and Leo and so I think they'd be flexible um, but they are also um, trying to get their ducks in the row for next year and determining what their capacity is with other school districts. And so I think you know postponing a week is probably fine. Um, postponing longer than that, I think we would, it, it wouldn't, we wouldn't have that flexibility. So I'd like to, I'd like to do a motion. I'd like to present a motion uh, to move this off for one week with a presentation of the survey data and in just very brief about the conversation so that we have all the full data from which to decide whether we're going to, um, someone will move to approve as I, um, at this moment, don't feel comfortable approving. Um, I'd like to move that we move this off for a week. And so how this works is if I don't get a second, that dies and someone else can approve so we can move on. Can I ask you a question? What happens if you don't use the funds in the restricted fund for these two consultants? Do we have to? Are we penalized, or can we divert the resources another way, or what happens? That was my question. Yeah. I would need to look up these specific funds, but generally, restricted funds coming from the state, if they are not fully utilized within the time span given, they must be returned to the state. I mean, so I again, don't these need to, these yeah. funds are until 2025. So again, I'm I'm making a motion to move this back to next week, have more data, and then the board will have the complete data and they can make that decision at that time. I will second that. All in favor? No. I, I, I opposed? Opposed. No. opposed. I think I'm okay moving. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we have, just so for the record, we have um, eyes are, uh, uh, do you know who are the eyes and who are the opposed? Okay, so this passes. So we will have this next week. How about if you stay here for the next one? Okay. Okay. Because I, I just want to know though. I'm, I, it's I'm what sorry. I want to know is, I mean, it's already starting to be implemented. So I recognize how disruptive it may be. So from this end, I just want to find ways of getting additional input, how it could be more effective, and how you know how teachers feel about it. You know, so that's I, I just, so, so we voted on that, and that yeah. information uh, we can also provide. What I'm hearing is to provide you're providing some additional direction on some yeah. possible information for next week. Yes, that and can also round out the, the yeah. questions. Okay, but if it's just going, it just will make it that we wasted all this money. You know, that will be concerned too. But we should do it with input from all the professionals and Laura and the teachers and Kimberly and Elizabeth, maybe. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to move to item six, which is agreement for services for Glean Education. And I'd like to make a motion that we uh, also put this on the next agenda with the PD survey information to provide um, some more uh, clarity on um, the vote and that this board 
um, may send questions to our superintendent and she can answer those questions between now and uh, the next meeting. Do I have a second? So Young he seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Opposed. Opposed. All right, so it passes 3-2. Thank you. So now we are going to move on to board operations. We have resolution 17 23 issuance and sale of general obligation bonds. Kimberly Berman, thank you very much for introducing this item, and it will be a roll call vote. Measure G was approved by the district voters in June 2022, authorizing $194 million in bonds for school facility improvements. At this time, it is our desire to issue the first series of Measure G bonds for voter approved projects. The resolution presented to the board authorizes the issuance of up to $23 million as determined at the last board meeting. Um, this is pursuant to the government code as tax exempt bonds in the form of current interest bonds only, no capital appreciation bonds, all in accordance with requirements of law, Measure G, and the district's debt management policy. We're asking for your approval to move forward. Thank you. Do we have any questions at this time? Discussion? All right. May I have a motion to approve resolution? The risk resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of 2022 election series A bond in a not to exceed amount of 23 million. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Was, did you say it had to be roll call? It oh, does. yes, sorry. I just. The president turns to charge. Yes. Trustee Abdoli. Yes. Trustee Yu. Yes. Trustee Katz. Yes. Trustee Nog and I'm Trustee Nagatani. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Now we'll move on to H2 resolution number 16, 2223, special parcel tax. Uh, Dr. Rollins will introduce this item and it is a roll call vote. Great. This is resolution 16 22 23. And this is based on the voter approved parcel tax that was approved on November 8th, 2016 and it expires June 30th, 2029. Our voters supported the parcel tax passage and also approved a 5% incremental annual increase. So what this resolution shows is what that increase will be for next year. Um, each parcel will be $1,313.28. And as you know, it is split into two payments um, through the taxpayers, um, through the County of Marin. So with that, we are asking for approval of this resolution, and it is a roll call vote. Do I have a motion to approve resolution 16 special parcel tax? So moved. Second? Second. All in, oh. No. President Susan Sajaj? Aye. Trustee Abdoli? Aye. Trustee Yu? Aye. Trustee Katz? Aye. And I'm Trustee Nakatani, I'm an aye. Thank you. It passes 5-0. On to H3, resolution number 12, 2223, authorization to sign. Dr. Berman will introduce this item. It is also a roll call vote. This authorizes certain members of our district to act on behalf of the governing board. It includes members of the business office and President uh, Sern Sichaj and uh, Vice President Nakatani um, for authorization to sign. We're asking for approval. So moved. I'll second. Second. Uh, Trustee Hod, President Sichaj. Aye. Trustee Abdoli. Aye. Trustee Yu. Aye. Trustee Katz. Aye. And I'm Trustee Nakatani. I'm an aye. Thank you. Thank you. On to H5, draft LCAP for 2324. No, um, four. Four. Uh, yeah, four. 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 Authorization. Lunch plan. Oh, my apologies. I wouldn't skip that for the world. <laughs> Number four, authorization to obtain approval and enter into a contract for 2324 school meals. Thank you. Dr. Rollins will introduce this item. Thank you. This is authorization oh. to ob uh, obtain approval and enter into a contract with the lowest qualified responsive and responsible bidder for the 23-24 school year for school student meals. Um, as most of you know, the CDE um, commencing with this fiscal year began two co uh, cost-free meals of both breakfast and lunch. Uh, the first step of this process was for the district to solicit requests from proposals of our local districts within the County of Marin. 
All of those districts did decline, and then we went out for bid with and solicited vendors. We solicited six vendors. We also placed this in the Marin Independent Journal. We placed this on our website, and we also did direct solicitation. Um, we do know that we had three responses, which are summarized in the board documents, and we are recommending to move forward with a lunch contract, um, which is provided as the lowest responsible and responsive bidder. And that is per public contract code that districts, public districts must um, award to the lowest bidder. And so with that, the summary document that's enclosed in the board documents does show that Lunchmaster is the lowest qualified, responsible, and responsive bidder. And just for all of us who have children who might not, <coughs> uh, can you just clarify, um, we have no choice but to go for the lowest bidder, um, correct? That is correct, and again, these are, um, we are providing these meals regardless of student status, um, so, um, in the past, it has been based on free and reduced qualified um, status, and so this is provided for all families. And we are also not allowed to supplement the cost of the, like, pay to get more expensive um, food yeah. either, right? We are kind of confined in the, uh, the confines of the program that the state has provided, so we can't really bump up the quality with paying more. Correct. Do we have to provide this service to everybody? Because what I've seen is just garbage creation. Absolutely, there are students that really need their yeah. meal, both breakfast and lunch. And um, if we can just serve even one student that needs this, this is our responsibility as a public school district to provide um, cost-free meals to those students. So we can't go back to the previous model whatsoever where we had- State you know, law changed. Okay. Uh, and my understanding is that we would lose access to additional funding um, if we were to pull out of the National Lunch Program. Uh, so is that, that, is that accurate? So many years ago, we did look into potentially um, withdrawing from the National School Lunch Program. This could potentially jeopardize all state and federal funds. And I recognize that that is less than 10% of our total district funds. Yeah. However, we are heavily supported and rely on those funds for our special education, our county programs, and mm -hmm. other funds. So it is an important aspect for us to maintain. So I just want to comment and um, you know that I was I was dis disappointed. Um, that I was excited when I saw that there were multiple bidders. I was disappointed in the end result. Um, I know that this program is minimally funded, so it's really hard to get a quality vendor um, and options for kids while also honoring everything in this program. I know there have been a lot. There's been a lot of feedback provided around uh, the packaging, not uh, not aligning with our climate-related goals and quality of food, and I would just say that um, I really hope that and feel strongly that this company will reassess based on the feedback that they've received from the district thus far, and I'm confident that our staff is going to continue to relay that feedback to them to ensure that improvements are made to their program. Thank you, Trustee Katz. Any yeah. other points of discussion or questions? May I have a motion to authorize to obtain Approval and enter into a contract yeah. for 2324 with the lowest responsible and responsive bidder, which was Lunch Master. <laughs> and nobody will, wants to do this. I will we, so I will we, so move. <laughs> Can I have a second? I, I, I will second. All in we favor? We need to feed our children. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? This one's not roll call. No. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, and now we're on to H5, draft LCAP for 2324. Thank you, Dr. Berman. We'll introduce this item. Uh, at the last meeting, we were able to present to the board the different components that went into um, ensuring that LCAP represented the input from our stakeholder groups, and it has been presented here as an attachment on the agenda. Um, it, happy to answer any questions. Following this, there is a public hearing. Um, we will then go forth, incorporate any final adjustments, and bring it back for approval in um, the next board meeting next week. Great, so just for clarity, um, at this point, you would entertain questions or mm -hmm. comments from the board. Do we have any questions or comments from the board at this time? 
Um, I just have a kind of a, I just want a comment in a way. It's something to share really with my other trustees. Um, and because I, I noticed that a, some of the metrics for measuring our children, it's, it's you know, l including but not limited to, you know, Fontes and Pinella and iReady. And for, um, I know for math, um, iReady at the middle school, uh, I, I do, I do wonder if we can get better data on um, how effective it is for our, our students. Uh, recently, you know, I was in one of the advanced math classes with a small, it was a small sample of children, I'll admit. Um, but, you know, to get into advanced math, these children are academically driven. And they were relaying to me the differences in all the formative testing that they're doing all year. And what the challenges I already presents to them as, you know, 12 and 13 year olds. And I, you know, we, we have this goal where we want, you know, baseline was 80% proficient and we want to be 95% proficient. I don't quite know what those numbers mean, but it, to me that just seems improvement. But I'm wondering if our, you know, highly driven academic students are telling me they're not trying on iReady, then I wonder if the data presented to us is accurate. I just I don't need to have a long discussion. I wanted to, I learned that recently, I wanted to share that. I thought middle school math they were using IXL. Can you, can you? No, they're, they're using IXL and iReady um, and CASP testing. And so I, I, I got the download on all the different testing they're doing. And I even came back after CASP testing to, to talk to the same group to, to like get their sense. Because they, because of COVID, they missed a couple years of CASP, you know, but then they've had iReady the whole time. Well, I think you're asking a good question because all tests and certainly norm standardized tests, there's pros and cons and some students do well and some don't and some students, you know. So I think well, that you're asking a really good yeah, question. Doing well and not doing well and then there's just intentionally not, not really doing trying well. right, because, because they're so frustrated by the program. Well, right, this right. Year, like this round, Edna, I believe, did both um, iReady and Listen to Learn. So they did two different. So, you know, they're, they're you know, I think maybe within all of this, it's understanding the benefit of having these comparative tests too, so that you know yeah. maybe a student well because they does well with money one too, and not right? on the other. Like to to subscribe to all these, I imagine they cost us money. I don't know the cost of any of it, but well, well, I, I think I guess I would ask a question of <coughs> Dr. Berman um, with stuff like. Pontus and Pinnell after seeing the updates on structured literacy and the feedback on iReady, I mean, with the LCAP, we're going into our last year of it. Um, where where would you anticipate that, you know, things might be going and, mm -hmm. you know, it may change over the coming year or plus? Uh, the next LCAP will need to be developed in this upcoming year. and all of the metrics should be determined for that next three year time period. And so it is completely up to this board and your superintendent and the team um, to really explore that with the teachers and determine what metrics you wish to use. Well, thank you, Trustee Nakatan. I think you bring up a good point that seems like it can be addressed um, as it's been noted in future conversations uh, next year. Sure. Any other questions or comments? All right, so at this time, uh, it seems that you've received all your comments, and now we are gonna go to H6, a public hearing for the LCAP. Uh, and, it, and is there any information you can share in terms of why we did this public hearing and the process around it? Um, so at this time, you should close the regular meeting and open the public hearing, and then we will open that up to any comments from the public. All right, so I'm now closing this public meeting at 7.11. And we're going to open a public hearing at 7-11 on the LCAP. And we're going to see if there are any questions from the public or comments at this time during our public hearing. Okay, seeing none, then we will now close this LCAP public hearing at 7-11. Thank you very much. Uh, and now we have under I business and financial matters one budget revision 2223 and preliminary budget for 2324 dr rollins will introduce this item great so um as you know the lcap the preliminary lcap must be presented in advance of the preliminary budget and so that's what we just heard 
Um, what is being presented here is the preliminary budget revision for the current fiscal year and the preliminary budget for next year for the 23-24 school year. There are six documents contained in the board agenda. It does include the presentation, the budget revision for the estimated actuals for the current fiscal year, the Marin County Office of Education common message, which is used for our projections as well as our assumptions. There is also a preliminary budget narrative for the upcoming budget year. This is a requirement by the Marin County Office of Education in terms of their AB 1200 review. And then we also have a separate document for the preliminary budget of our special purpose funds. These are funds that are outside the general operating budget. And so with that, the first um, pages that you'll see are the current year budget revision. The first slide is our revenue, and this would be the general fund. And what we are showing here are any changes that have occurred since the board saw the last financial uh, presentation, which would be the second interim, and then the estimated actuals for June. So we do not see any changes at this point in terms of the revenues for our property taxes or it's characterized as LCFF revenues for the state funds. And then we have also adjusted the um, the federal dollars based on our ESSER <coughs> dollars, and those funds will be used um, towards federal dollars, and the ESSER funds are restricted funds. And then there was an adjustment on the state revenue side, and it's for the STRS on behalf. This is really an accounting aspect in terms of the revenues, and then you'll also see it on the expense side. And then there were also adjustments made in local revenues for the interest, and again, this is something that will be accounted for at the end of the year. And then going to the next slide, we have our expenditures, and so you'll see our changes there based on our estimated actuals. We've made budget revisions, and you'll see in the center there, there is that large stirs on behalf, and again, it is a, it's really an accounting adjustment that we do um, on both the revenue and the expense side, and then you'll see that there are some additional changes as well. Um, for services and operations, that those are estimated actuals, and you'll also see the capital outlay, and this was the board approved playground equipment um, that was taken from the fund balance, and that was approved by the board. And so that is our current year budget. And then looking at our preliminary budget, if we new move to the next slide, um, there is an ed code requirement. There is 33129 and education code 42127. And basically, this requires districts to provide their um, preliminary budget. Um, as well as their adopted budget no later than June 30th mm -hmm. for the subsequent fiscal year. And then we had reviewed this at our May 24th board meeting. If we move to the next slide, we had discussed the assumptions. And so these assumptions the board has already reviewed and gave the thumbs up in terms of the assumptions that we're using for the preliminary budget. I will make note that we are using for the property tax growth a 6.6% .6 increase and then the other aspects we had reviewed at the May 24th board meeting. And then looking at the next slide, again, one aspect is with the preliminary budget, this excludes all one-time funds and carryover, and that is the main distinction when you're looking at the two in comparison with the interim reports. Um, again, as mentioned earlier, 91% of our projected revenues will come from local funds, and therefore 9% are coming from state and federal funds. And then the next slide, you can see that the majority of our funds, over 80% of our funds are the lower portion of, I'll call it the donut, um, which are certificated salaries, classified salaries, and employee benefits. And then looking at the next slide, we have summarized our multi-year projections, which are in your packet. They are um, in the, what's called the SACS format, and we also have the multi-year projections. I think we need to move the slide. I'm sorry, are we on the right oh, slide so here? Sorry, I wasn't. <laughs> no, but I know, I know. No problem. Thank you. Um, and so you'll see in all three years in the oh, multi-year. Oh, no, we need to go two more, I think. I'm sorry. It's the multi-year projections. That one. There we go. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so what you'll see here is our multi-year projections in all three years. We anticipate meeting and exceeding our economic uncertainty of 3%. Please keep in mind that in this preliminary budget, we have added step and column. We have included the settlement agreement with CSEA for the 23-24 fiscal year. It excludes any other increases that have not been um, negotiated or um, brought to the board for public disclosure. And so um, I just wanted to make note of that. And the CSCA agreement is for the single year of 23-24. 
And then we can move to the last slide, which is our preliminary budget. And so again, we did review extensively the budget at the May uh, 10th meeting, as well as the May 24th board meeting. And so what we're bringing forward to you is the preliminary budget for 23-24. We are recommending that the district uh, move forward with the public hearing as well as the adoption which will occur on June 15th. This has been published as required in the um, newspaper um, in terms of a public hearing for this evening and also our adoption for next week. Um, and we work in collaboration with the Marin County Office of Education to submit all of these documents. So with that, we are um, asking the board to um, approve the plenary budget, but also to hold the public hearing. Do we have any questions or comments Can at we this do time? First for uh, do we have any public comment? No, we oh, don't. Somebody so. said they submitted a public comment. Okay. Got it. Okay, thank you. So I have a question on this. So just for our clarification, can you tell us? Um, the tax growth, it's now 6.6 .6 before you had 6%, right? That is correct. Okay. So when we were at, this, at the second interim, yeah. um, we had a projection of 6%. So based on the County of Marin estimates, we are anticipating and projecting a 6.6% .6 increase. However, keep in mind this current fiscal year, we will not receive our final taxes until August. And so once we have that, we'll build the um, assumption of the increase based on the the confirmed 22-23 um, property taxes. Okay, and then other years have gone up tiny little fraction as well. Correct. Too. Okay. 4.6% uh, for next year. We had reviewed this um, at the May 24th board meeting. 6.6, 4.6, and 3.5. And then, and then on on, um, on the, the budget revision, general fund expenditures. The expenditures estimated for this year is. Um, Two, it's our two million dollars higher than our revenues, right? Is it because of that one and a half million dollars in restricted fund thing, or without it, or does it include it? On the estimated actuals, the summary it's negative, and that yeah, um, the reason why is because we also have our restricted carryover as well. Yes, so so we lost, I'm not lost, but deficit. Ongoing deficit without that will be about five hundred thousand. Yes. So if okay. uh, on the first summary page, and um, if you're looking at the sort of the green shaded yeah. one, yeah. if you look on the far right, it's the um, six eighty one. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right. May I have a motion to approve the budget revision for twenty two twenty three and move to public hearing at our June fifteenth meeting. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. We'll see you June 15th. Brandon, and so we do have the public hearing. So are we, and, and. No, public hearings right now. So I have here, okay, budget revision, okay, and the public hearing. Now, let me ask you a question. Um, is there a time um, amount that we are supposed to give the public hearing? Okay. All right. Uh, and so I will now close this meeting at 7.20 p.m. and will open a public hearing, 2324, for the preliminary budget at 7.21. And do we have any public comment for this item? Okay. Seeing none in the audience, then we'll close the public hearing at 7.21 p.m. All right, and now we're on to J, superintendent report. Thank you, Dr. Berman. All right, I'd like to first say congratulations to our eighth grade graduating class. It's quite exciting to get to the end of another school year. Um, congratulations as well to our fifth graders who are leaving their beloved elementaries and moving on here to the middle school as well. Um, and congratulations to our retirees. Uh, we very much value and appreciate your service to our district. Uh, I am looking forward to celebrating with our families this Friday, and I know that our board members will be attending the ceremonies as well. And I would like to also just wish everyone a very nice end uh, two days uh, of all the excitement and everything happening in the classrooms. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Berman. And now we'll go to board reports and future board items. Uh, Trustee Nakatani, would you like to begin? Um, I would. I want to put on a future board item. Um, I don't know if everyone saw the next door thread about the Redwood yearbook. No, did novel. not. Could you explain? So, Talia did. Um, a student, uh, a student who att attended Redwood for all four years, um, was part of an MCO uh, SPED class. But Redwood campus for a solid four years was excluded from the yearbook. And I just want to make sure we don't ever do that. Um, so it, the latest update, and this is this is just a story, but the latest update was like you know MCO is now involved, and I don't want to wait for a policy from MCO. I want to have a policy of you know, that we make sure we can, that never happens to us, that we don't do that by accident. Um, so I, it's just, you know, something for the future, but uh, waiting around for MCO could, I don't know how long that could take. Okay. So. I think maybe Dr. Berman, you can speak to, I, I think M, the MCO classes at Edna, I know have been very, they've been very focused on inclusion and um, and I know it's very much a focus there, so. Yeah, um, and, and my, when I was at Edna is when the um, MCO class was put into our yearbook, I think for the first time, and this is now, what, six years, seven years ago probably. Um, but then this year they, they had the t-shirt issue, as we remember, too. So it's just, I don't know how to work that into our policies that we, are always mindful of it. I, I think the T-shirt. Yeah. Oh, T-shirt. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. I, I mumbled. Uh, the T-shirt. Oh, you guys remember the T-shirt yes, issue? Yes, yeah. Yes. So I just want to, you know, see if we can somehow implement something. So what I'm hearing you say is you'd like for a future board item to have a discussion. Maybe you could make it clar clarify it so that our staff could could clearly We'd be happy to look question. into this and bring back a conversation. We don't control the yearbook, so I don't know. It's um, it. it from, from what I heard, it's a ro it was a roster issue. You have the roster of the high school students, and then you have a roster of MCO, and they never, they never merged them. I don't really know what I'm uh, wanting to put on okay, an agenda, well, item. A, but maybe an she's really good at no, 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 work. No, no, no. So. What about? Um, <laughs> I know it doesn't squarely fit in our DEI committee, but they've been doing an amazing job. I wonder if DEI committee, since it is integrated with PTA, which then does the yearbooks, yeah. maybe we start by doing an ask to them. Of, Thank you. Is that That's an option? Right. Yes, okay, we can start, great. and then and then if it, yeah, we sure. learn more. I just want to bring so, it up. So it I'm sounds like Trustee, to, yeah, Nakatani and Trustee Abdoli perhaps craft uh, We'll reach out to them and, and per some communication. Perhaps, perhaps better to include It Takes a Village. Um, yeah. because, oh, because yeah. their focus is more aligned with, um, yeah. with those students in those groups. So, uh, and I think my understanding has been shared with this board previously is that because there have been some incredibly unfortunate situations that have come up like this in the past, then there have been learnings taken away and applied to the next year. And I know there have been a number of those in my time at Edna, and um, I think people are continuing to learn from those and do better. Yeah, um, I know I agree, but uh, sometimes it's institutional knowledge that goes with the parents who often are doing these things. So that's, yeah, that right, happens sounds like we. So it sounds like we yeah. have a solution. Yeah, we a, do. Uh, yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you so, everyone so for helping trust, me figure sure. out what I want. And Trustee Nagatani, <laughs> do you have any other uh, board? No, I do not. Okay, Trustee Abdoli. Nothing for me. Okay, Trustee you. Nothing for me either. Okay, Trustee Katz. Um, I just want to highlight that between the Pride event and the open houses and the bazillion performances that have occurred over the last couple of weeks that have been kiddo sponsored, I am just in awe of the community and um, just want to recognize how many people it takes to make this stuff happen. Um, so, you know, just wanted to express so much gratitude to our classroom teachers, to the specialists, um, the classified staff, PTA volunteers. Um, kiddo, the people who are donating, the board members of kiddo, um, and definitely the students, and I'm probably, uh, the district office, I'm probably missing somebody, but it is just one of those, the many examples here of just the village that it takes to support this community, um, and it's not on any one, one person or one group, but everybody coming together to support our students, mm -hmm. and it's just amazing every time it happens, so um, what a celebration it's been this last month as crazy as the schedule has been. 
Thank you for reminding I mean, really. Thank you, Trustee Katz. Yeah. The um, classrooms were just kind of magical, right? Like the creativity of the um, different rooms and the hallways of all the art. Um, it really was just an exciting place to be, as it always is, but really having the doors open and um, very much appreciative of um, just the creativity. I, I, I just the, the ideas and the warmth in the classrooms. The art show was amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was very impressed even, you know, just the fact that my son, who doesn't necessarily like art, was able to create some beautiful <laughs> art item was like a miracle to me. The jellyfish, did you guys do jellyfish? We didn't we do jellyfish. jellyfish. <laughs> we didn't do I jellyfish. Have a cap. With the shower cap? No, no. but it, it's a very cool clay thing. Oh, I don't know how to hang cool. it yet, yeah. but no. it is a very it's, cool it's item. It's been sitting on our kitchen counter, but, <laughs> but they, are, they, are, they are lovely. So. Uh, yeah, they did, they did pottery, just clay stuff, but I couldn't recognize my son's uh, <laughs> stuff. <laughs> What that was you will cherish it forever though because I have clay items from my t now 27 year old daughter still sitting do you on now are you now at the point that you keep handing it to her to say like here take it back because my mother keeps and it ends up in your garden again <laughs> just goes right back in the garden yeah. so I, I also wanted to share that um, I'm sure I speak for all of us in how appreciative I we are of our principles to to extend um, also the work they do for the open houses, but also to warmly welcome our new superintendent. And thank you fellow board members for jumping right in and, and supporting that effort. I think that was really, um, I felt very proud to be a fellow board member with you. Uh, and also I am really looking forward to the um, promotions, graduations, celebrations uh, that um, I myself will be there at Park and already talked to uh, my principal and I'm excited uh, to be able to just feel, see the tears and feel all that it's, that, that, that will embody. And then also we'll be at the middle school um, and uh, supporting our principal in any way that I can uh, as your board trustee and wondering if there's anybody else who might be going to the middle school promotion. Okay. Okay. She's, so we'll she's, she's got to. She's to. Yeah. going <laughs> for going sure. Uh, and should be, should yeah. be going Three after my daughter's fifth grade promotion Wonderful. Ceremony. I'll be handing uh, out popsicles at my school. Yes, you yeah. will. <laughs> yes, you will. Uh, really the most valued part I mean, of it. I'll be pretty popular <laughs> at that point. Um, All right. So please, I, one last comment. And I, I have two, two items that I'd like to raise for future board items. Please. Um, one, just related to my comments that I made at the last board meeting, um, there's been a big resurgence in anti-Semitism, including right here in Mill Valley and Marin County. It's been in the news. Uh, we know some of the middle schoolers um, wrote something to the board uh, to that effect as well. And the White House just recently issued the first ever national strategy to counter anti-Semitism. And uh, the very first strategic goal in it is around school-based education. So I would love at some point, no, not any rush on this, but um, would really love to understand what teachers are including in the curriculum um, as well and just understanding what grades it's being taught. Um, I grew up learning from a very early age about the Holocaust. Um, many of the survivors are um, now at a point where they're dying and there are fewer of them around. And so just making sure that we are continuing that um, in the education that we're providing. So just want to understand what's being done. Um, so I'd like to, so what our, yeah. our process is that we have a second, I'd like to second a conversation at a future board meeting, which would be agendized by superintendent and uh, president in conjunction with the vice president and um, sounds like a conversation and some information yep. on on anti-Semitism se anti curriculum. I second that and now we need um, a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, so that goes on our agenda item. Your second, um, Trustee Katz. Uh, for, just for enrollment, and this is a small thing, but I noticed in the FAQs that um, siblings are prioritized within the round of registration, um, meaning that if somebody moved to the district um, during round two or round three, they would fall below in priority anybody who, um, who may have registered in round one regardless of sibling. So just a minor adjustment. I think it's probably something that we might revisit in a future board workshop on policies. Um, but would like to look at that and see if that might be a good adjustment to make sure that we're prioritizing keeping families together as best as we can. 
So I am hearing uh, bringing that policy back to the board and us looking at it and providing some local control context to it. Sure. So could you help, uh, because I'm not sure it, um, we have a, a board policy around this and maybe you, you could help us with the language to, to move it mm -hmm. to a board agenda item. You have an administrative regulation related to the placement of students. Is that where that component is held? Um, and so that is part of your board policy manual. Okay. So we don't know what the number is, but um, I'd like to... I think I actually have it. Please do. For the record, that would be great. Uh, it is um, AR 5... 111.4. So I'd like to second that we bring in a future board agenda item that would be um, agendized with the new superintendent and in conjunction with the president and vice president. Um, AR 5111.4 would be brought back for a board discussion and possible revision. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, trustee, you, would you have something else to add? Yeah, for future board meeting, um, it doesn't have to be this year, but we, you know, gun safety is important. We recognize the National Gun Safety Day. Um, as I said in, during that board meeting, I think it's important for us to actually do something about the safety of our children. And I just want to know if there's anything that we could do district-wise to enhance the safety, um, such as protocols, um, you know, what we are actually doing it. Are we, are we, you know, I know that safety officers, school safety officers are involved, but how can we be more proactive? Yes, and so, um, Superintendent Berman, could you share with us uh, what district processes, protocols, or, um, you know, written documentation there is that guides uh, the work, which I, we're learning is site-specific? We do have a part um, on our website, Julio could certainly speak more to it, related to our safety protocols. Thank you, Julio. Good evening, Julio Royal, um, Director of Operation Safety and Maintenance. So in terms of our safety protocols, we have a district-wide lockdown drill as well as drills throughout the year um, around safety um, that are universal for all the school sites. Okay, but, uh, and, you know, like for example, Tam Valley, I know school site committee has come up with some proposals and ideas and, and does that require some capital improvements or are we waiting until the bond issuance to implement some of the ideas? We, um, as part of our work with our school resource officer, as well as our Keenan, our liability insurance, they gave us certain objectives around school safety. And so we've been doing some that work last year around improved visibility around sites um, and some of the different things that we could take around school safety. There are some other things like capital improvements around fencing that could be looked at. At this point, we don't have that planned, um, but that it, we have done some of the items um, to improve visibility around science and make sure there's less hiding spaces as well. So, Doc, uh, Trustee, you, I want to, um, Dr. Berman was uh, sharing, a, I thought, a good idea that this is a very important topic for many people. Yeah. And we had Jill Kaufman, who spoke very strongly about this, who may or may not be on our. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to, um, I'd like to move that we add yeah. a future agenda item on our um, safety district policy protocols get a full understanding of it so that this board can um, make recommendations to the district staff for future work um, and so did I share that motion properly yes do I have a second, second. I'll, second. yeah all in favor aye, aye. aye. thank you okay thank there you, we go <laughs> Well, we have um, a request to address the board on board reports. So Gabby Dominguez, Gabby Dominguez, are you here? Oh, hi. Hi, Gabby. Hello. Thank you for being here. And we understand that you have a public comment on board reports to share with us this evening. 
Well, with the board um, about the future items, one of the things that you were talking about, and the things in the in the um, for the yearbook. So um, in the yearbooks, we also it's like about it's a it's a PTA um, issue, and we talk about uh, this in the former DIE committees that we need to include all the English learners, all the MCO um, students, you know, all the staff and all and, and you know all people who who works at school. So, and we have been uh, talking about this in another um, PTAs, is that we also include like uh, all these kids from scholarships and fifth graders, you know, with the kids who are living um, the elementary schools or the middle school. So I think that is an issue that we can, uh, well, you as a board can talk with the PTA presidents or the PTA council. So this is something that, you know, that you can talk for all schools to do the same. Thank you, Gabby, appreciate your comments. All right, and now um, we, um, help me out here, because we are moving on to our closed session. So public comment opens for that. And we'll do that at this time. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are um, gonna be moving into closed session, and we have three items. First um, is a, a conference with a legal settlement. Do we have any public comment? You can name all three, and then anyone can speak to any of the three. Thank you very much. Conference with labor negotiators, MVTA. Do we have any comments? OK, and then conference with labor negotiator unrepresented. Do we have any comments? OK, so seeing none, we are going to adjourn this open meeting, and uh, we'll go into closed session at 7.39 PM. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now open the regular meeting at 9.51. And we're here to report on M1A, Conference with Legal Counsel Existing Litigation. Pursuant to California Code Section 54957.1, the board has approved settlement by unanimous vote in the case of student and the Mill Valley School District. The terms include up to 151528 and reimbursement for educational expenses during the 2023, 20, 24, and 24-25 school years. Thank you, and that concludes our meeting at 9.51.